times, and uh, I think that he has a good grasp of the migration and uh, the immigration of people, the Kashubian people, to this particular area. Joe uh, has presented this same presentation several times in Twin Cities, well received. We're happy to see him here in Winona. And so give Joe a little round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the, the title of, the paper, of my presentation this evening is Our Kashubian Polish Heritage. It should go for about 30 minutes or thereabouts, and then I would be more than happy to take your questions at the end. Of course, if there's some question just so profound you can't wait, I do that too. Um, please go to the next slide. Okay, there you go. If you are Polish, if you are from Winona, or think you're Polish, or think you're from Winona, um, raise your hands. Okay, chances are, you are not just Polish, you are Kashubian. For many, many years, nobody, nobody, not even in this town, knew what it meant to be a Kashubian Pole. Well, I found out at the ripe old age of 45, 46, that I was one. My next question was, what is a Kashubian? And my second question is, so what? Um, I'm here to answer, what is a Kashubian? I'm here to answer, so what? A Kashubian is, go ahead to the next one, um, something pretty awesome. So much so, in fact, that when I was filling out my United States Census form for 2014 this year, you'll notice here it says, what is Joseph J. Hughes' ancestry or ethnic origin? I put down Kashubian. Next, please. Um, just a little bit of map work here. Um, the area that we would say Kashub is Kashubia. Okay, it's not a country. It's never been a country. It's never been a nation. It's never been a place inhabited only or even mostly by Kashubians. It's a place where you can find people who are Kashubian. And it's right up around here where it says Kashubi. You'll notice it's right next door to the Pummer. Kashubi and Palmer together pretty much make up something called Pomeranian. You can say that the Pomeran are Pomeranian Germans. You can say that the Kashubians are Pomeranian Polish, but even that doesn't really do them justice. And this is what East Central Europe looked like at the beginning of the age of immigration in 1850. Notice, there is no country named Poland. Poland had been taken off the map in the 1790s. Poland would not appear again until 1919, and even then only for 20 years. That's part of our Polish history too. Poland comes, Poland goes, but the Polish will not be kept down. Okay, here again is another shot of Pomerania in beautiful colors here. I draw your special attention to the area up here, which is kind of lavender, very tasteful lavender that I selected myself, to indicate this is where the Pomeranians and the Kashubians mix. Notice that the Pomeranians have most of everything because they're the Pomeranians, they're the German side. Of course they're going to have everything. The stuff in the pink down here is pretty much historical Kashubia. I can't stress enough that, again, Kashubia, well, let's see, the next slide should probably explain this. Go ahead. <coughs> well, no, that doesn't explain much of anything. That's um, my 50th birthday in Shimbar, Poland. <laughs> um, um, my dear friend, Mogorzata, um, encountered this uh, Kashubian power trio to serenade me on my birthday, and for one song, I stood in on an instrument called the Devil's Violin. It's, sim it's very simple. Anybody can play it, as I demonstrated in that picture. Next, please. Notice here that the area of Kashubia is centered on the city of Gdansk to the right. That's where you fly in when you come to visit Kashubia, and it's shrinking. The area where you will find Kashubians is getting smaller and smaller. And even in this green area, ethnic Kashubia, remember there are no boundaries, not even in the city of Bitov, Winona's sister city. 
Will you find all Kashubians or even a majority of Kashubians? You will find that the mayor, Richard, Richard Shilka, is a very proud Kashubian. The chair of the city council, Lesh Vasilevich, is also a very proud Kashubian. But um, it's not a nation full of Kashubians. The Kashubians live among the Polish, live among the Germans, live among the Ukrainians, live among the Jews, and we always survive. Okay, the next slide should be something like a history lecture. Well, oh, way to go, Nance. You got it. It's a part of Northwest Poland where Kashubians live. The major city is Gdańsk, a beautiful city, well worth visiting on your own. And actually, I'm going to be landing in Gdańsk at 10, no, 12.30 on this Thursday, this coming Thursday afternoon. Never been a country, never been even a kingdom. There's never really even been a province called Kashubia. It's belonged to Poland, Prussia, and Germany. It's been visited by Russians, French, and Swedes. Even the so-called Kashubian towns like Bitov are not totally Kashubian. Kashubia has beautiful forest hills and lakes, many of which resemble not so much the lake area, but the hilly areas really do rem um, are very reminiscent of Trempolo County, the Pine Creek, Dodge, Arcadia areas. Lots of beautiful little villages and churches. And lots of, there you go, just a slide to unlock. Thanks. Um, what it doesn't have is fertile soil. It is very difficult to extract a living from the soil of Kashubia. And even so, the poles are thought a little bit backwards. And here is the church. Yes. That's where my great-great-great-grandfather was baptized. That's where my great-great-grandparents got married. That's where my great-grandparents got married, and my great-grandfather was... So much history in that church in Leszno. You've got to go there. Look at how beautiful it is. Look at how it survived the ages. Multiply this by... Well, there aren't many churches as beautiful as this. But multiply this by the number of villages and towns of Kashubia, and you'll understand what a treat Kashubia is for the eyes. Next, please. Why did the Kashubians come to North America? The great Polish emigration, hordes of Poles depending, descending upon Chicago and Buffalo and Milwaukee, that didn't start until the 1870s. The Kashubians of Winona, the Kashubians of Stevens Point, Wisconsin, the Kashubians of Wilno, Ontario, you could say we're on the front line of the emigrants. Why did they emigrate? Well, one, as I've told you, the land is beautiful, but it's not very fertile. And knowing a thing or two, as the people in this room probably do, about how good Polish Catholics like to have large, large, large families whenever possible, it gets even harder to provide land for your children. The Germans have all the good land. The Germans don't want to sell it to the Poles. The Poles don't have any money. The Kashubians, oh, by the way, the Kashubians don't always love the Poles either. A bad Pole is no, is, a good German is better than a bad Pole. You can go back, here you go. Um, the Germans did not start persecuting Kashubians, Poles, and Catholics until 1872 under Bismarck but they didn't mind watching the Kashubians go. So the Kashubians did. Sometimes individual Kashubians emigrated, sometimes entire families, like the Bronk family, which came to Winona in 1859. Some infants, some children, some people died at sea. Some were born. They were coming, from the, coming for the American frontier. Their dream was to start farms earn enough money to buy farmland, make a go, make a profit with the farm, and hopefully go back to the old country and start farming again with a whole lot more money in the bank. Um, even though many Kashubians would eventually stay in Winona and thrive in Winona, Peerless Chain is one example, Fastenal is another example, St. Stanislaus Church is another example, in their hearts of hearts, Kashubians are farmers. They're happier on the land.
They basically wanted to make money and return home. For many of them, Winona was just a start. Work in the boom town of Winona to make money, buy land in Trempolo County across the river in the Dodge Pine Creek area. Okay, now I'm ready to show a couple more pictures. <laughs> 